SDXL or Stable Diffusion Extra Large 1.0 is here and it can already create some stunning AI generated images. It's a model that people can base their checkpoints on or train extra networks like LoRa's, which is exactly what we will be doing today. Checkpoints are standalone and they are often large files, while LoRa's, they are smaller files that are faster to train and can be used on top of different checkpoints. Kind of like filters that are professional at a certain style, object, pose, or character's likeness. Today, let's train our own LoRa. To do it, we need to install Koya SS GUI. It's an open source project that provides tools and scripts for training and fine tuning models, LoRa's, extra networks, and so on. This project supports Windows, Linux, and Mac OS platforms and offers tutorials and documentation on the project's GitHub page. All the links that I mentioned here can be found in the description underneath this video. You can check out their documentation for installation guides for or other platforms, today I will be just covering Windows. To install the necessary dependencies on a Windows system, you need to have a few prerequisites. First of all, Python, then Git. These two you probably already have installed if you're using Stable Diffusion locally, or if you watched one of my two installation guide videos. If not, check them out. The third one is the Visual Studio. You just click the link, it downloads, install it, pretty straightforward. There's nothing extra that you need to think about there. After that's done, you have to create a new folder on your computer. I called mine Koya. Then go to the path of the folder, type CMD, press enter and copy this command line. It's from the project's GitHub page. Once that's done, you have to change into the Koya SS directory and then execute the setup.bat command and it will do its magic. Or you can close the window and just open setup.bat from the folder itself. Now that you have the setup menu open, you want to install Koya. So you type in one and enter. For torch, pick number two and just wait a little bit. It's going to install a couple of things that are important for it to run. And if you already have some of them, it's going to update to their required version. At least that's how it was for me. Now you have to answer a few questions and we're almost done. In which compute environment are you running? I chose this machine because I'm running on this machine. Which type of machine are you using? No distributed training. Do you want to run your training on CPU? you only? For me, definitely no. So I type in no. Do you wish to optimize your script with a Torch Dynamo? No. Do you want to use DeepSeed? No. What GPU should be used for training on this machine? I typed in all. Now for the last question, if you have a GPU NVIDIA series of 3000 or newer, you can pick BF16. If not, then FB16 is the one you should go for. All right, now that you're all done, you can pick option number five and start Koya in your browser. Or you can go back to the folder and open the gui.bat file and it will give you a link to go to. The headless false error is all right. Don't worry about that one. And this is the interface. Now that you have the software ready, the next thing you need to prepare are your images for your LoRa training. Use images of yourself, other characters, objects, styles, but keep in mind that the better the image quality, the better your LoRa and your final AI generated images will be. So don't use something really pixelated, blurry, and tiny in size. Here are some ideas for finding images. You can go to the Google Images and change it by size large and you can find some really good stuff in there. Or you can go to advanced image search and choose image size larger than 4 MP or larger than 6 MP. But the higher you go, the less options you will have. So larger than 4 should be good. You can also go to royalty free websites like Unsplash, Pixabay and then find images there. They are royalty free and totally cool to use for commercial purposes, by the way. You can also look for websites with high-res movie screen caps. I find this option to be less talked about, but I think it's super useful, especially if you're trying to train a character. It is probably one of my favorite ways to do it. And you can also go to a website like Wikimedia Commons. There's really so many places to look for images. Just make sure to look for images with different angles, emotions, lighting, distance from camera, clothing, hair,
hairstyles, colors, and so on. Variance is very good as it will allow you to generate more varied images afterward. Now for this video, I decided to train Alora on Mr. Beast for entertainment purposes only. You've probably heard of this guy. He is an incredible creator. And now that you have all the images, here's a tip. You can select all of them, press F2 on your keyboard and rename them all at once. I think that's a bit better than having all these random numbers and words in the names. It shouldn't cause any issues, but better safe than sorry, right? So as you can see, I have 23 images here, but how many images do you really need? For characters, you can really use as few as 10 high quality images to train an effective Laura. To replicate a specific style, you will probably need about 20 images plus. To be safe, I'd suggest starting with 10 to 20 images and adding more photos if the results don't meet your expectations. Now in the past, it was common practice to crop images you prepared to like 512 by 512 using websites like Burmy, but it's not longer necessary and you will get a higher quality Laura without cropping the images because Koya has this option that allows you to group your images by certain ratios for training purposes, keeping your original images with more details and more information. You're not cropping it out anymore. So I definitely suggest using this option and not cropping. But if your computer can't handle large files, you can crop the images or you can use a compressor to compress them. Now let's talk about captioning the images. It is an easy task and it can be done using Koya's utilities captioning. So the most common ones I find are the blip, B-L-I-P captioning and WD-14 captioning. So you can choose whichever one you like more. Then you just select the location of the folder with your images. So in this case, I'm using WD-14 captioning. I typed in Mr. B for the prefix and I didn't adjust anything else and I just let it run. And as you can see, the folder is now being populated with text files. And here's a little tip from me. So the tag frequencies that are showing up, I like to copy all of them and I like to create a new text file and put them in this new text file so that I can later reference them in my prompt creation. I've never seen anyone else do this, so I'm not sure how helpful this tip is, but it works for me. So I thought I'd share it with you. And then in this case, I created three folders, images, log and model. Then I dropped all of the Mr. Beast pictures into the images folder. Now, before we move on, I also made a Laura for this video that is based on a style or a vibe. If you look at all these images, you might notice that they have this dark atmosphere with some bright spots in certain parts of the image. So for this Laura, I did something a little bit differently. I have gone and used the blip captioning and I added a prefix dark shine. The prefix and postfix are not necessary Necessary, but I find it very helpful if you're training a character or an object to make sure that every single image has that caption. So Stable Diffusion knows what you are trying to train. That's how I like to think of it. As you can see, the folder populated with text files. Now I don't find that the prompt is good enough for most of them. So what I like to do is open each one at a time. I look at the image and I think, okay, what would I type into Stable Diffusion to get this? And then I add it to the prompt. So the difference between the blip and WD-14 captioning would be something like a woman with pink hair and blue eyes and WD-14 is one girl, solo, pink hair, blue eyes. So depending on how you like to write your prompts, if you use Denver tags or if you like to just use regular sentences, you will pick one or the other. If you don't want to open the captioning like this, which I still think works very well, you also have an option to install Buru Dataset Tag Manager. So you just have to download the zip file right there. There, I created a new folder for Boro Dataset Tag Manager and I drop the zip file into that folder and I extract it here. Once that's done, I run the Boro Dataset Tag Manager and you can see it looks like this. And then I go to File and I select the folder with my Mr. Beast images and text. I can also go to View and preview and have it somewhere here. So once I click on every image, I can adjust the tags. You can see the image tags are in the middle and then all tags are on the right. So these are all the tags that are used within all these images. There's a lot of helpful tools here like paste a tag everywhere or delete a tag from everywhere. So this could speed up the process if you wanted to play with it, but using just the text files is also good enough. So if you remember, I created three folders for Mr. Beast and you can do that yourself or 
you can also go to Laura Tools Deprecated, and then it will help you create these folders and everything properly. So for instance, prompt, you have to type in something, what you're training or who you're training. And if you're training a famous person, it is a good idea to type in their actual name because potentially Stable Diffusion already has information about them or has been trained on some of their images. So it will only help your Laura. For Mr. Beast, I would just type in Mr. Beast. For this style, I'm just going to write dark shine because I can't think of anything else at all. Now for the class prompt, it's your classifier like woman, man, object, person, style, dog, and so on. For training images, you open the folder with your prepared images. Repeats is how many times they will be trained. 20 is a safe bet. If you put more, then potentially the quality will be higher, but also it will take way longer. So I like to go with 20. Now, regularization images. <laughs> okay, I never use it, but a lot of people do and they say it's helpful, so I believe them. Plus, it takes less time to train without them, so it's really up to you. If you have a folder with many high-resolution images of your classifier, you can use it here. Now, the destination training directory is where you want to generate these folders for training and where eventually you will have your LoRa being trained to. After clicking prepare training data, all the folders you need should be generated in the selected destination folder. Images log model. And you will also see that it says something like 20 underscore dark shine or 20 underscore Mr. Beast. This number is added from the repeats you chose. Please don't rename it. Koya needs it to train your images. Now to the fun part. We're almost there. Laura training. So we have here in this tab three different things we need to take care of. We need to take care of the source model, folders, and parameters. So the source model, we have to pick the source model. Are you training the Stable Diffusion 1.5 or Stable Diffusion Extra Large 1.0? Select that. And if it's SDXL model, make sure to also check mark it. Now we go to the folders. You already have everything prepared, whether by creating it yourself or through utilities. Select your image folder, but don't open it. Don't select the 20 underscore dark shine. No, just the image folder. So it says dark shine slash images. Then we have dark shine slash model. That's your output and logging dark shine slash log. Make sure to add a model output name, name it whatever you want. And now let's go to the parameters. This one is the most confusing out of everything we've done, I think. There are so many options in this section and so many variations of the settings that I will show you will work just as well. There's no one size fits all. But I will show you my settings and try to explain what most of them mean so you can make adjustments that will fit your LoRa best. So LoRa type, I select standard. Train batch size. Now this one's interesting. For a person, I suggest one because it gives more time per each image for stable diffusion to train on. So for Mr. Beast, I selected one. But for a style, you can go higher. And for this Laura style that I'm training currently, I selected four. It will speed up the process. It will look just as great, if not better, than if I trained on one image. If your computer can handle it, of course. Epoch is how many times you want to repeat the training on top of the original Laura. I always go with 10 so I can then test all the Lauras and find the perfect one. Save every number of epochs. If you leave it at one, each epoch will create a separate Laura file. If two, then only epoch two, four, six, eight, ten will be saved and so on. To save space, you can do too, but if you can, I suggest saving every epoch and then deleting the ones that didn't work out. Mixed precision, save precision. I go with BF16, but if you don't have a 30... XX series, you know, like 3090, for example, or newer, then you need to use FP16 instead. Number of CPU threads per core, leave it two. Cache latency and cache latency to disk, check mark both of them. Learning rate. I suggest inputting a value between 0.001 and 0.004. For Mr. Beast, I picked 0.004, and for the style, I picked 0.003. LR schedule. We should select constant and warm up of 0%. Optimizer add a factor. That's the best for SDXL. 
but that also means we need to have some extra arguments. I will also leave them in the YouTube description. By the way, you can also see and copy all of these settings from my blog, createxai.com. I posted an article on this exact topic. Max resolution, 1024 by 1024 is probably the best option, but you can also use 768 by 768 to save on VRAM, but it will produce a bit lower quality images, but not by that much, to be honest. So for Mr. Beast, I use 1024 by 1024, and for the style, I use 768 by 768 just because the original images are actually smaller as well. Enable buckets, check mark it, and you won't need to crop training images. Text and unit learning rate, input the same number as in the learning rate. So if we used 0.004 in the learning rate, we put the same here. No half VIE, check mark. Network rank. So the larger the number, the more details the LoRa will retain, but it will also produce a larger LoRa file size, like by a lot. It would be the size of a checkpoint sometimes. I use 256 network rank and one network alpha for Mr. Beast. And then I used 32 network rank and 16 network alpha for the style which will produce a smaller size and it will also look good. So as you can see, both of them work. You can test it for yourself. Finally, in the advanced settings, make sure you check mark gradient checkpointing and don't upscale bucket resolution. This configuration will use about 20 gigabytes GPU memory. I have a 3090 and it works well. I hope it works for you as well, because I know how frustrating it can be if things don't work out or you don't have enough memory. Fun fact, I had a 3080 and I couldn't train Allura. Then I switched to 3090 and, and now I'm able to do it. Good luck. As you can see, this one's training the Allura and it took me 42 minutes and 31 seconds, 16 images at four training batch size. Now, all of your trained Loras will be in the model folder. For me, it's the dark shine model. You can copy them and paste them into your stable diffusion models Laura folder then open your stable diffusion and let's see the results. So here I opened that common tags file that I told you about and I used a couple of tags from there just to remember what we train on and see how it would work out. And here's the result. Well, it looks somewhat like Mr. Beast, but not entirely. That's fine. This Laura needs a bit more work, which I will not be doing because this was just for fun. I also tried some digital painting styles, illustrations, and so on. Dragons too, but that didn't work out. <laughs> now let me show you how to test which epoch is good. And it's my best friend XYZ. I will tell you why it's my best friend in one of the later videos. But for now, let's just type in a prompt and see the result. Here is an image without the Laura. I like to always go before Laura, after Laura. All right. So what I'm looking for is shiny hair, vines, and just dark mood overall. Now we can go to the Laura option in Stable Diffusion and just select all of your Lauras. Copy them, use the XYZ plot, paste all these Lauras and add commas in between. Now it should go through each Laura one at a time and you won't have to monitor it or change anything. So just let it run and see the results. I think the result with any of these Loras looks much better than the original result, but I'm just looking through them and trying to see which one is the best. And in this case, I think it's Laura number seven and eight. And then I do that a couple of more times, test them all and find the winner. In this case, I think the Laura that worked out the best is number five and number eight. So I can delete the rest and just use five and eight or ju just leave one if I wanted to. And the Laura is trained. When I do the same with Mr. Beast, I find that it is 100% Laura number eight. Eight. For style, it's often a bit later in the epochs that it's starting to look really good. But for characters, you never know. And when you're looking at the character, you're looking at two things. One is the likeness that the Laura produces of the character that you were training on. And two is the ability to be stylized. That's very important because if you want to create a painting, but Laura is overtrained, it will always produce a photograph instead. So we're looking for a happy balance where the character looks just good enough to be somewhat recognizable, but you can still make it into an oil painting, 3D rendering,
wondering and so on. So I think here it was super evident to me that Laura number eight was the best option as it produced the best results all throughout my tests, even though sometimes it still failed, but that's okay. I hope this video helped you understand how to train your own Laura, and now you can go and have fun training them on your own. Only your imagination is the limit here. You can train a Laura on anything that you want. Hope you enjoyed this video, and hey, if you're still watching, check out this one next. Keep generating. Cheers!